my Facebook to see if anybody wants to. Um, Sounds good, buddy. And we're live. Well, hello. Yo, yo. So, everybody, uh, I'm here with James McIntosh. And you used to do the podcast. It was Top Dead Centered, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yep, I did uh, Top Dead Centered. Yeah. And you're, uh, you're a car guy. <laughs> so uh, I'm uh, interested in chatting about cars for a, a bit at least, and then uh, we can del go off into whatever direction you want, really. You know how it is. It works for me. All right. So uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to ask you a question. What is your current favorite American-made car? My current favorite American-made car, if I had to just pick one gun to my head, which is difficult because the industry these days is in such good shape. Um, if I had to pick one, uh, it would be the Cadillac CTSV. The current the current CTSV um, is just an incredible car. Well, let's talk about it. I gotta I gotta okay. look it up. I don't even know what this car is. Um, Cadillac uh, CTSV. Okay, so on the gum, uh, yeah, it's. I think mm -hmm. it was one of these on the Gumball last last year. They had uh, one of these that had a thousand horsepower. Yeah, that's that's not unusual. Um, Son of a bitch! Look at yeah, this the, thing. It comes with six hundred and forty. Yeah. Stock. Oh my yeah. God! I, I didn't even know. Is it all-wheel drive? No, it's rear-wheel drive. Um, it's basically the drivetrain from the uh, ZL1 Camaro and the Z06 Corvette. So it's a supercharged small block um, oh, wow. with an eight-speed auto, and uh, it's in a very mild state of tune, making 640 horsepower. I mean, that's hardly even, um, you know, hardly even stretching at all. They are. Yeah. yeah. I think if you're going to spend a hundred grand on a car, um, which these things can break a hundred thousand, um, it's a hundred thousand dollars well spent. I mean, it's supremely nice inside. Um, it's fast enough to kill you very quickly, which oh, is my God. I would say that's, that's, uh, that's M five speed there. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure an M five could hang with one of these past a, um, you know, past 60 miles an hour in the first place. Huh. Yeah, so uh, I've got all kinds of thought. Dude, I didn't even know know this existed. Yep. Um, and so Cadillac makes this. This is their mid-size sedan. They make the V version of this with you know 640 horsepower. And then if you want something smaller, they also make the ATSV, which is their small sedan that's rear-wheel drive that has a 450 horsepower twin turbo V6. Uh -huh. You can get with a six-speed manual. Um, and those cars are also uh, the ATS is a car that doesn't seem to get a lot of love um because it's kind of cramped inside and the interior isn't super nice but the chassis on those cars is incredible the the handling and uh, steering response and brakes and um so yeah the atsv and the ctsv are probably my wow my two favorite uh current american cars but okay. I, I mean it's it's hard to pick uh because there's there's so much good stuff on the market these days that's american um yeah, I mean, I mean, you can just go, you can go nuts. Now, what about the reliability on a car like that? Like, what's the? Um, you're gonna get better. And now, I mean, if anybody wants to throw tomatoes at me, that's fine. But um, you're gonna get better reliability out of these than you will out of the supercharged Mopar products, the Hellcat and the Trackhawk, um, yeah. because the groundwork has existed for so long. I mean, GM's been making small blocks for you know <laughs> eighty years now. What? Um, and so, I mean, with anything that packs this much heat and this much power into this small of a space, you're bound to have some kind of issues. Um, mm -hmm. they have stacks on stacks of heat exchangers in the front of these cars. I believe the ATSV actually has a, I believe it's a trans cooler that's mounted, um, that's mounted parallel to the ground under the motor. Um, mm -hmm. so, I mean, they, they pack a lot of different, uh, different types of radiators into these cars, but, um, they've got the recipe down pretty well as far as making these things work and not blow up um mm -hmm. so they're not they're not real highly stressed yeah motors. so the the last um 
uh, high speed, nice Cadillac I drove was the Alante. Do you remember those? I do. Yeah, the uh, the flying Italian Cadillac. <laughs> yeah, Alan yeah. built Alante. built by Pininfarina. Um, so they they flew the bodies in white and especially made seven forty seven um, across <laughs> the Atlantic to Italy, where Pininfarina did final assembly. And then they put them back in the same planes and shipped them, <laughs> shipped them back over to the states. Uh, thus, Jeez, that uh, sounds expensive. Yeah, they were they were fairly expensive cars. And in typical General Motors fashion from the '90s and '80s, um, the very last year of production of the Elante, they had the uh, the four four point six quad cam North Star V eight for one year of production before they canceled it. So the six years before that, they had the uh, the older style push rod aluminum motors that didn't make a lot of power. And, they went, oh, well, we'll put the good motor in right before we cancel this project. <laughs> yeah, well, so so the car you're looking at there, uh, red, black, with a black top convertible, mm -hmm. uh, that last year, uh, that's the one that I drove. I, I mean, it okay. wasn't mine. You're going to laugh. You know whose it was? Whose? My wife's 80-year-old grandmother. Okay. It seems yeah. like an 80-year-old grandma kind of car. Well, she always drove hot, like, crazy cars she mm -hmm. she had uh you know what's the camaro that had the basically had the corvette engine in it <clears throat> um i camaro ss yeah she had she had like a string of those yeah and this is and she was like in her 70s and 80s when she had all of these cars like mm -hmm. she had to you know go to driving school and all kinds of stuff <laughs> she got an oak I, well so i was um uh, i was driving uh at the time, I had a, a 280ZX, and I was going mm -hmm. balls out on uh, I-35 down to uh, Des Moines, right? I mm -hmm. was going fast. And uh, she, she, I saw this red car coming up, and she passed me like I was standing still. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, you know, I can't believe yeah. I can't believe they make cars that fast. But anyway, that was a beast of a car. Yeah, if they if it were a ninety three, it would have been the North Star ones, and that was three hundred horsepower. Um, and or maybe it was two ninety. I mean, but you're splitting hairs here. That was a lot for nineteen ninety three. You know, back in ninety three, yeah, like, that was two thirty five. You yeah. know, so it, it would have been the same amount of power that a uh, Corvette that year had when they still had the old LT one. Yeah. So even if you get into like the two thousand Mustang GT, you're still looking mm -hmm. at two sixty. Yeah, those cars are yes. dogs. They sound good though. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, they've uh, but, got a, I mean, they were, great sound. They were, but. Yeah, they were pretty quick. I, I uh, got to drive one of those around quite a bit. Yeah. I liked it. The other one that I drove around quite a bit was uh, my buddy's uh, 5.0 from the 80s. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my uh, dad had two, two 5.0 Fox bodies. Yeah, um, and they were they were pretty nice. So th that yeah. thing was ridiculous. But he, he, uh, he put a cage in it and autocrossed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, well, the, the thing people think about those old Fox bodies, oh, they're they're old, dumb American iron. Like, well, you know, even with the, the iron block 302 in them, they still were under 3,000 pounds. They were very light. Mm -hmm. um, and you can make them handle. I mean, they're not, you know, it's not a Lotus Elise by any stretch of the imagination. But um, Fox bodies can be made to handle. And, you know, there have certainly been some, yeah. some successful race cars built out of them. Yeah. So, so there's a guy from Germany that always... Uh, watches our streams and stuff mm -hmm. um and so he says uh the car nation says hello to all the slaves of speed limits in the rest of the world <laughs> yeah don't rub it in <laughs> yeah and then he says uh by the way i sold my car today and am carless now uh he's only got his bike now so he he uh he's a motorcycle mechanic slash ent emt slash uh university student Okay. And he's got an R1 that's like a Frankenstein Ooh. R1 that's just yeah. ridiculous. But uh, one of the guys on the one of the car podcasts I listen to, um, the the Clutch Kick podcast, has an R1 that's a, a few years old. And I'm not um, I'm not super knowledgeable about bikes. Uh, I know a little bit about bikes. I I know enough to get myself in trouble. But um, the way that he describes the R1 ownership experience is seems pretty extreme. Um, yeah, they, they seem like fun bikes. Um, yeah, I I've never dr ridden an R one. Mm -hmm. um, I've ridden. Uh, there's an Italian racing bike called the Aprilia or Aprilia mm -hmm. uh, that's got a 
B twin. That's yeah. the, that's the fastest bike I've ever been on, and the thing was ridiculous. Like those I things, get in trouble on those. Too. Yeah. Yeah, those are beautiful bikes. Aprilia is, and um, are Aprilia is Aprilia one of the companies that makes their own engines? I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I it was a it was a hand surgeon's bike when I was at the <laughs> University of Louisville. We went out riding, and I had my uh, Triumph, and then mm -hmm. he had that, and we swapped. And I was like, "Oh my god, this thing yeah. is crazy." It seems like a risky mode of transportation for a hand surgeon, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's you have to. It's like anything if, if, if you're careful with it and um that, that there's a personality type that becomes a surgeon mm -hmm. and by and large that personality type uh is the kind of person that likes fast cars and motorcycles now there are, are definitely exceptions to that but yeah almost everyone i know um that's good at being a surgeon has that personality type um in the 80s this guy I knew, uh, he got a an M series BMW, mm -hmm. uh, and he had it like highly modified <laughs> at the factory. And then he was like driving around town in this like crazy car, and nobody even knew what it was. It's the middle of Iowa, you know. You don't even have a clue what what you're looking at, you know. You know it's a BMW, but you have no idea that this thing's got this crazy, you know, horsepower and acceleration. But, yeah, M cars in the '80s were uh, were distinctly um, non noticeable unless you knew what you were looking for. And um, the real early M cars, your your original M5, M6, and M3, uh, the motors were actually derived from race car motors. Um, especially the the original M5 and M6, they had that inline six with individual throttle bodies and a duplex timing chain. At least in Europe, they had the duplex timing chain, and it was the motor from the M1, which was the car that was half built by Lamborghini and Wow. Well, sort of when they could be bothered to build cars. Um, and it was uh, it was a race bread motor that they stuck cats on and went here. Good luck. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, so it was just barely tamed for the road. Um, and those yeah. those cars are just heroic to drive. They're just, you know, yeah. power had, band had... from idle to seven and oh, glorious. And BMW doesn't make anything remotely that good at all today. I, I, I couldn't, I, you know gun to my head I, there's not a new bmw i would want but but okay, the 80s yeah. stuff <laughs> we'll, yeah we'll, we'll get into that but yeah mm -hmm. he had a it would have been about 80 i want to say 86 when he bought right. that and the thing was just ridiculous i mean mm -hmm. it was it was crazy and then he later on i mean he's always driven those but then later on he uh got into motorcycles too <laughs> yeah so, but anyway it's it's a there's a personality type and the, I'm not saying if you don't have that, you're not going to be a good surgeon, but it's almost universal. That personality type and the surgeons that I've known, they've been good surgeons. Right. So um, anyway, it, it, it explains, I don't know. Uh, and then, you, you know, you have your grandma and everybody else telling you, uh, no, you know, and all this. So mm -hmm. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> all right. So um, what? what uh, Next question for you. Okay. What what would you like to if you could name all of the features you wanted on an American car? So does tell me your design for an American okay. car. So um when when I was prepping for this, I, I split this up into two categories. One of them is if I had a blank sheet of paper that I could design my own car, what I would design and how I would design it. And the other was um cars from American companies that I think should exist but don't. But that's, theoretically that's, could. Yeah, that's um, what I'm looking for. So my from from the the stuff that should theoretically exist, all of the the parts are out there to make it exist, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, I had three hypothetical ones. Um, okay. And then I had a overall hypothetical idea that somebody should just do, but they haven't yet. So okay. my my three hypothetical ones. Um, so back in 2000 and, 2008, um, Chevy made the cruise with i'm sorry not the cruise the um what was the turd before the cruise the cobalt uh, the, uh yeah. chevy made the cobalt with a two liter turbo um that was derived from a sob motor they called it the lnf and it was a 260 horsepower 260 pound feet of torque um you know rocket ship that was put into a rental car 
Um, and they were, they were, yeah, and they would have gotten beaten to death. Mm -hmm. agency. Yeah, they would have they would have expired quickly. Um, but those cars were rocket ships. But the car itself was deeply unpleasant to drive when you weren't <laughs> beating on it because it was a it was a cobalt. So the interior was awful. The seats were awful. It it had a torsion beam out back. It was, um, but it had this killer motor. Um, and with you know a little bit of tweaking, they could they could be absurdly fast. Um. And then when they started making the cruise in 2011, which is a much nicer car to just drive around, they've never put a two liter turbo in it. They've put this little uh, wheezing 1.4 liter um, eco turbo garbage. Um, so what I would like to see is Chevy sell the two liter turbo with a six speed in the current cruise, um, especially in the cruise hatchback, because that's the perfect example of, oh, that's a nice looking car. Why does it only have 140 horsepower? I'm like. <laughs> so I'd like to see the motor from the Malibu turbo and the ATS 2.0 T and the Equinox and all that shoved into a cruise. I know it, it, it will fit. It, bloop, they could just put it in there, call it the cruise SS and take some money from Ford's pockets, you know, for the people that don't want to focus ST. Um, I don't know why they haven't done that. I'm sure their marketing people know better than me, but it seems like a no brainer. Right. Um, another thing I would like to see, from Ford. So right now you can buy a Mustang. You can either get a Mustang with a 2.3 EcoBoost, which is a four cylinder, which is a totally fine motor. Um, my good friend, Michael Block has one. Um, or you can get it with the five liter V8 and the Mustang GT. And then there's also the Shelby with the crazy flat plane that's, crank. That's the one you want. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I want them to make is the V6 EcoBoost in the Mustang, either the 2.7 twin turbo or the 3.5 twin turbo. They're both F-150 motors. So they're already designed to go front to back longitudinal. Um, put, you know, a 2.7 EcoBoost Mustang, you know, they make 380 pound feet of torque now, which is, you know, <laughs> more than an LS1 Corvette made. <laughs> like, yeah. um, that motor in a Mustang would be stupendous. It, was, it, would, it would be fantastic. And I, I don't know why they don't put it in there. Um, it seems like a no brainer, but it might be that there's just not enough breathing room between the two, three and the five Oh for that. Yeah. Um, well, and, and then the thing is, is like, like you were saying earlier, one of the reasons you buy a Mustang is the mm -hmm. sound. Yes. So the yep. women buy the four cylinder, the mm -hmm. men buy the V8. <laughs> I think you know? Michael would take exemption to that, but that's okay. Fine. <laughs> well, just by and large, by mm -hmm. and large. And I'm not, I'm not disparaging any, I drive a four cylinder car. Yeah, you know, so I'm not disparaging anybody's choice, but I'm just yeah. saying that that's their marketing overall idea. I think is that you're you want you want a certain sound if you're driving a Mustang. Mm -hmm. you, know, you want the Steve McQueen badass bullet car scene yeah. sounds. And you know? as good as the current EcoBoost is, and I think it makes 315 horsepower, so more than a '96 Cobra made. They're they're getting half the engine size more power than an older Cobra. Um, yeah. As good of a motor is, is the the front end's real light. You got good weight distribution. It's real, real reactive. It's got great steering input. Um, you can get it with the track pack. So the big Brimbos, you, you know, summer tires, all this. It still sounds like, uh, it it sounds like a vacuum cleaner that needs to have the filter cleaned out. It doesn't. It does. <laughs> it doesn't sound good at all. Um, yeah. But I think that the twin turbo V6 with a little bit of intake work would sound very cool because um, I'm partial to twin turbo sixes. But um, the one thing that I really want to see that I don't know why it hasn't happened yet. So um, you were around and were aware of automotive things in the eighties, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You remember the Buick grand national? Yeah. Okay. So it was a regal it was a G body regal. Yeah. Let me put up, a, um, let me put it up. Um, I, I saw these, these were cool. Yeah. So it was a G-body Regal Coupe, the same thing as a Grand Prix or a Cutlass, but it had the yeah. Buick 3.8-liter uh, V6 um, with a single turbo. Oh, yeah. I remember these. Everybody, yeah. every meat, meathead, yes. uh, muscle head had one of these things. I, I had a plan with one of these. The, they were rocket ships. Fucking ass. Yeah, they were fucking rocket ships. That yeah. Buick lied through their teeth about how much power these made. They said they made 245 horsepower in, in the 87 the intercooled. But they were running like 4.9 seconds to 60. Um, yeah. That's a GNX, but same thing. You know, actually, no, that's a Grand National GNX wheels. Anyway, these cars were the meanest, most Darth Vader looking. 
I mean, they had George Thorogood doing the ads. You know? Yeah, they um, were badass. They were badass. And, bad I, ass. and, and I, can, I had a friend with one of those. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that two people can ride comfortably in that trunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Um, so <laughs> you, they, can, you can pretty much stretch out in that trunk. <laughs> They were they were pretty much the fastest accelerating thing you could buy in the U.S. that wasn't like you know a Ferrari F40. I mean they this would blow the doors off of any Corvette, um, most Porsches. You know it was they were they were ridiculous in straight line, um, yeah. but it was kind of like a, a ridiculous engine looking for a good chassis because it wasn't a great chassis particularly. Okay, so now in present day 2018, uh, GM has a, a chassis, so you know they share components with everything. Um, so the Cadillac ATS and the current Camaro are on the Alpha platform, which is a aluminum intensive front engine rear wheel drive chassis. Um, and they even make the uh, the Cadillac ATS V has a twin turbo V6. Why don't we have a Buick Grand National that is on the Alpha platform with the twin turbo 3.6 liter that already exists? And you can get it in any color you want as long as it's black with black wheels. There you go. <laughs> like, why doesn't I? Th they should make that right now, <laughs> and they don't. It would be the it would be the meanest, coolest thing. <laughs> um, and that's that's what I I wish that you know. Yeah. Um. So, you know, those are three specific things that the parts are there and the development work is already there, and it just needs to just needs to happen. I think needs right. to happen. Um, but my, my overall concept of what I would like to see is, um, and Mopar gets the closest with this. I want to see a full size sedan that is unibody, it's, you know, McPherson struts in the front, four link in the back, front engine, rear wheel drive, big sedan that handles, that has a big V8. Um, there you, so, go. Yeah, you know, perfect. Ford could make like, a. Well, and they recently stopped making, sadly, in Australia, the Falcon. Have you seen the the newer Australian Ford Falcons? Let me look it up. Um, um, it's I'll, really going to make you mad course. if you haven't seen one. I'll tell you that right now because we got the Taurus and Australia yeah. got the Falcon. And, you know, you had your choice of a big straight six with a turbo or a big V8. And it's this big, handsome looking rear wheel drive uh, uh, family see, sedan. Ford, Ford Falcon. Mm -hmm. What's the last year they made it? Uh, 2016 or 2017 was the last year they made it. Okay, I'll find a good image. Oh my god! Yeah, and so they made. There were like rental spec ones, just had a normal straight six. But then, if you wanted a fast one, there was either the four, four liter twin cam single turbo that made 400 something horsepower. Yeah, that's a good looking car. Jesus. Or they sold them with supercharged five liter Coyotes. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, these these were fully modern cars. They used uh, ZF six speed automatics. They had nice interiors. They were four wheel independent suspension, rear drive, big V eight. You know, two gear long burnout. Like this is a man's car. Yeah. And uh, fucking Kia got closer to selling something like this in the U S. than Ford does. You know, the new the new Kia Stinger is closer to this ideal. No V eight, but. Um, you know, it's closer to that than, than Ford. We got the Taurus, which is a, you know, a fancy rental car. Um, yeah, I mean, here's here's the thing is they used to have like uh, Crown Vicks and, uh, you know, big sedans with V8s in them. Mm -hmm. Like, do, do we even make anything like that anymore? A big sedan with a V8, if you want it in the U.S., it's going to come from Mopar. So yeah. it's going to be a Dodge Charger or a Chrysler 300. And... There, I don't. I don't hate these cars. I'm not anti Mopar. Mopar is doing what they can with what they've got. I think that's admirable. They make some cool stuff. Um, the Hellcat twins and the Track oh, Hawk, yeah. which is basically the Hellcat Jeep, um, which is a hundred thousand dollar truck now. Um, yeah, they make some cool stuff, but oh, they're so big and they're so poorly built, <laughs> and you know. I, some of the problems people are having with Hellcats these days, yeah, um, with superchargers failing and rear ends failing and oil leaks, yeah, and there's all kinds and, of issues. You know. my, my, again, back to the surgeon thing. The one mm -hmm. person in town that has a Hellcat is my friend, and mm -hmm. he's a surgeon, <laughs> and he's got a Hellcat. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just think that they they put a, the biggest engine they could in there and then they didn't engineer the rest of the stuff that you have to think yeah. about when you're putting the, that kind of power into a car. Yeah. You know? I, my concern is, okay, so you can get a, a Challenger Hellcat, you can get with a manual, um, which apparently they eat clutches, or an automatic. And the automatic that it comes with is the ZF8 speed, which is a, a fantastic automatic. It's one of the best ones. But I don't believe it's rated to handle as much power as much power as Mopar puts through it in the Hellcat. Like, you know, so ZF who makes the transmissions will say, well, this, this transmission is rated for uh, 700 Newton meters torque. And if you put more through it, it will blow up. And Dodge says, yeehaw, we're going to put a thousand yeah. through it. You know, we're going to blow this motherfucker up. There's going to yeah. be chunks of ZF all over the road. <laughs> and, uh, and sorry for my 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 terrible German accent. <laughs> yeah, my German guys. Uh, let me see. He he said something else. He says, "What I really hate about cars is fixing them. You have to remove like five good parts to get to the one you want to fix. Makes me cringe <laughs> so hard." Yes, absolutely. Yeah, positively as, agree with that. As a as a mechanic, which is my day job, um, I can't agree with you anymore. It would not be possible for me to agree more completely. Um, the modern cars are basically plastic Legos with a couple of actual bolts and a lot of disposable parts that you remove once, throw away and replace with a new one, even trim pieces. Um, yeah. So that's, I, I can agree with that. A lot of modern stuff is not really serviceable in the same way that older cars used to be. Yeah. For me personally. So, uh, okay. So, so I have a, a couple couple things to go through here okay um let's see i gotta find okay so here's here's the thing that i'm most excited about oh the new bronco and ranger yeah mostly the bronco agree. yeah uh I, that's the thing that i'm most excited about in mm -hmm. upcoming american vehicles is that okay and i may i may get one i but you know i would have to I would have to figure out what to do with my STI because I love mm -hmm. it, but um, uh, that's a whole nother topic of discussion. So this is what I'm most excited about. Okay. I wish that Dodge would re-release. Let me find it. This. Oh, man. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Yeah, I, I had two of them. You had, so I, were they I both had Ram a, chargers or did you have a Plymouth Trail Duster? No, Ram Charger. Plymouth nice. Trail Duster was uh, older, so I had a okay. an eighty two that was light mm -hmm. blue, and then I had a, I want to say it was a nineteen ninety that was colored just like that, exactly like that. What you're gonna um, need to do, Kyle, is you're gonna need to get your passport out and go down to Mexico and go to yeah, some but, car auctions there and get one of the late nineties Ram Chargers that they made. Have you seen yeah, those? They look like, they look like Durango's though. <laughs> they I look like, like shit, <laughs> but it's basically a, a two door Ram 1500 with an SUV body and grand caravan taillights. Yeah, They're kind of like cool. It. Yeah. yeah. It's not for me. Okay. Yeah, so I gotcha. <laughs> okay. So now, um, I'm real excited about this Cadillac, uh, not that one, but the one you were telling me about. So I'm going to have to look into that. The CTSV. Um, yeah, I, I will have to look that up. Um, mm -hmm. Cars that I want made, not this one. So what I think needs to happen, mm -hmm. the big hole in the American car market. Now, Ford is recently this year um, tried to fill it, and I've driven this car because my brother has one. Mm -hmm. It's the the Focus um, all wheel drive that makes like 340 horsepower. Oh, the Focus RS. Yeah, and it's it's all right, but like comparing that to my STI in terms of like a whole lot of stuff, there's no comparison. The STI is so much better. Really? Um, yeah, because I mean, just like. Um, so like we're sitting in the driveway and you rev the engine and the thing backfires. Yeah. On purpose. Right. But I, you know, come on now. You... <laughs> I have a friend that intentionally put a extra backfiring tune on his 500 a bar. <laughs> He's like, you got to drive it. It backfires more. I said more. <laughs> it needed more than it already had. <laughs> right. But I mean, there's just, there's just little things like that that just tell me that maybe this was kind of thrown together and not really a serious thing. 
Oh, it was that is not a thrown together car. Ford Ford put a lot of money into developing that. Um, well, it's it's nice. Okay, so I yeah. I like the car, um, but it's not. I like the STI better, and I'm okay. glad I bought the STI instead of that. There's mm-hmm. just there's just something about those STIs that is just awesome. I mean, yeah. it's just an awesome car. It's awesome to drive. Uh, everything on it, you know, is like you can tell you're driving something that has a lot of thought and, and technology that goes into it. And it's and it handles like you would not believe. Mm-hmm. And when you get on it, um, it y- you have power that you would never believe, you know. Yeah, it's um, it's unbelievable power in, in that car. So you've driven both, um, and yeah. the STI handles better than the RS? To, it, to my style of driving, it does. And I like just the overall feel of the car. Right. Like there's some, it's, it's difficult for me to explain it, but if you get into a Porsche, mm-hmm. the way that feels versus the way a Mustang feels. I gotcha. You know, um, so like it, it just feels more solid. It feels like they've made it things to tighter toler- tolerances. Right. It, it just feels like it's a better made product, you know. Um, I think the big advantage of the STI house over the Focus RS is that Subarus are designed from the outset to be all wheel drive. Um, so they've got uh, a long, uh, horizontally opposed four cylinder, you know, like this yeah. that's mounted front to back with the crank facing towards the radiator. Yep. Um, and so the whole all wheel drive system is not a what I would call an add on all wheel drive. So like on the Focus RS, you've got a transverse four. And then you've got the transmission next to it. And then you have a transfer case that the passenger side axle passes through. And uh-huh. there's like a brain that does a lot of thinking and says, oh, we need the rear diff to turn on now. So let's engage this hydraulic clutch pack in the rear diff. And there's there's signals and, and it works. I mean, they've been making cars like this for a long time now, but it's not the same as Subaru where it's flat four in the front transmission axles coming out of the transmission to the side drive shaft coming out of the back of the transmission active center differential it's so subarus aren't reactive where like so a focus rs it uses the wheel wheel sensors in the rear to go oh uh the front wheels are spinning transfer power to the back and it's it's reactive subarus aren't um and they also have the the center of gravity lower than it, uh you know a, a transverse inline four because the cylinder heads are down there you know below the headlights so i think you're always going to get better steering response and um, all-wheel drive reaction out of an STI. Now, the funny thing is, I say that, but at the same time, I contradict myself because if you drive a stock STI and then you drive a stock Evo 10, have you ever driven an Evo 10? No, I haven't. Oh, Jesus Christ. They're, uh, they're, they've got shitty interiors and they look like your little cousin Vinny riced it out at Pet Boys. And they're they're way overpriced. That they, they were like forty grand when they went out of production in twenty fifteen. Nothing handles like an Evo. It, it's it, yeah. I mean, I, I'd have to, I'd have to drive one. You gotta drive one. Um, you gotta drive one if you get the chance. Preferably a five speed instead of the weird twin clutch thing. Yeah. But the big party trick there: a they spent all they spent all their money on the suspension, wheels, tires, and brakes. I mean, they've got yeah. all of the suspension components are. Uh, are aluminum. They've got Coney shocks. Um, but the big thing is they have a active rear diff. And when I say active, I mean, it, it has a hydraulic pump that sends pressurized fluid to either side of the clutch packs in the rear diff to move the rear end around, um, according to a yaw. Oh. And, and it, it it's, I mean, those cars came out 10 years ago and it's, there's nothing, there's still nothing like them. They're, they're, they're totally right. insane. Um, and everything is just razor sharp and, um, and I think the STI is overall a better car, especially, uh, you have a 2015, oh, uh, 2016, 26 overall, yeah, much so, better car. Yeah. The and that year they, nicer. They're not yeah, as short and, geared and, you know, well, and, that, and that year too, they, they made some big changes to the suspension. The engine's mm-hmm. the same, but the suspension is different. Yeah. So my, my experience driving that is probably different than driving an older STI. That's true. Um, but I had my STI on a track, a real track, you know, mm-hmm. not, not an oval track, a road course track called Wickerman in um, uh, Western Michigan. Okay. And the thing was awesome. Um, I mean, it was just I, gorgeous. I could not, even with the traction control turned off, you cannot 
handle what that car can do. Yeah. Like I could not put it into a slide. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it'd be, especially at stock power levels, um, it'd be really hard to get um, the tail end of an STI to come out. Under it just power. won't. It just on, won't. On There's nothing you can asphalt. do. I don't, um, yeah. on dirt or snow. Now, so you get oh, a yeah. lot of so snow, snow, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So mm -hmm. this is why I'm so keyed into all-wheel drive cars, and this is yeah. where I'm going with this discussion. But, like, uh, if if all I had to do was drive on pavement and, um, you know, if I could have a winter truck car and then a, mm -hmm. a summer car, uh, that's what I would do. But up here, um, most of the year, you're going to be in inclement conditions where a real real wheel drive isn't going to make it for you. Right. You know, the yeah. It's going to be wet or it's going to be ice covered. Yeah. Know, down here, most we of the year. snow like once a year. And everybody freaks out and buys their bread and milk and then stays home. And um, so I, I, you know, I, I've got a set of dedicated uh, snow tires and steel wheels that I slap on my car whenever it actually snows here. And, um, <laughs> so I just, you know, brrr, drive past people that are like stuck um, yeah. in my in my super old ass Volvo. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so I, my what I am looking for, what I want an American car company to make is flavored by where I live. You know? mm -hmm. So um, that makes sense. The the thing that we're missing, and so Ford kind of did it with the Focus RS. Mm -hmm. um, Dodge kind of did it with this this year. The uh, oh, eh. they made an all wheel drive. Okay, but and this <laughs> is why I went so. math. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so so they kind they almost got there, you know. Yeah. I looked into this car and I'm like, it's a B6. I'm not buying that. I don't they care how many. They could fucking get there tomorrow. Has. They could make the Challenger with the all wheel drive and Hellcat motor because they already sell that as well, a Jeep. I don't, the Trackhawk is an all wheel drive Hellcat Grand Cherokee. They could yeah. put a Hellcat motor and the beefed up all wheel drive in a Challenger. It's the same. It's the same stuff. They could do that tomorrow. I don't. I don't know why they have well, it. Well, and so let's say that let's say you don't want to use the Hellcat motor for whatever reason. Okay, I okay. I understand. That's fine. Um, any V eight will do. Uh huh. You know why yeah. isn't there? So this is this is my one big request. I want okay. a two door, all wheel drive V eight with five hundred horsepower to be made in America. Like five hundred in America. Plenty. Yeah. You know, and but it, it and it needs to be a, a reliable platform. They could yeah. easily do that. There's there's no reason why they're not doing that. And when I saw that they put a V6 in this, I was so disappointed because if it had a V8, I would trade in my STI and I would be driving that because honestly, I would rather drive an American car. Yeah. But, you know, they just they, they just made that's a huge mistake. Like who's going to. I don't know. I don't understand that market. I, I guess maybe they, they did some research and that's who's going to buy it. They want mm -hmm. a V6 in there. Um, now, you say that you would trade your STI in for one of these so you could drive an American-made car, but the Challenger is made in Brampton, Ontario. Well, I understand. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I understand, you know, but the thing is, is like where I live, mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons our economy is so good up here, and this is something that not very many people get, is that... Um, there's uh, tons of little mom and pop shops that might make one part for that car, but it feeds them and it feeds all of their employees. You know, mm. so everywhere you go up here, there's some like little machine shop that's making parts for all these companies. Yeah, that's you true. Know, so, so if I can feed that supply chain by buying an American car, even if it's made, you know, finally assembled in Canada, those parts are coming from like my neighbor. You yeah, know, and and that's so that's that's why I would like it, but I want them to do it as an all-wheel drive. Yeah, uh, with a V8. You know, they got so freaking close. Yeah, um, but they yeah, if they put a even if they just put the five seven Hemi in with the all-wheel drive, I still think it'd be a nice car. I was trying to think of a V8 all-wheel drive two door, but then you lost me at American and five hundred horsepower because the old um oh yeah um the old uh, Audi S five had a had a v8 four-wheel drive but it, it didn't have that much power so, uh dsms yeah. though that's a 
All right. <laughs> so, so Eagle Eagle uh, Talon, my buddy had one of these that was all wheel drive and had mm -hmm. the turbo and all of that, but he wrecked it. And I drove that a little bit. Um, yeah. At, at the time, it in that car, I think it, it was maybe a 200 horsepower car, but in that car, it felt a hell of a lot more than 200. Yeah, those would have been somewhere between 190 and 205 for a all wheel yeah. drive but generation. It, it, it felt so much more powerful than that mm -hmm. and it handled really well like i think they did that car was probably ahead of its time in terms of how well the they did the all-wheel drive and i mean because it did pretty good you could yeah. still you could still slide it in corners my car doesn't matter how fast you go into the corner you will not slide it mm -hmm. you know unless there's some unless there's gravel or some other thing there you know so they did a i thought that that car was probably ahead of its time yeah so, they were um you know when they came out in 89 you know it was about the same money to get an all-wheel drive uh talon eclipse i don't mm -hmm. think they made um all-wheel drive lasers i can't remember though someone will probably correct me um it was about the same money to get one of those as it was to get like an iroc z or a you know five uh mustang gt50 um and they were just as fast in a straight line and you know way more technologically advanced um they were also about as uh about as reliable as a chocolate teapot <laughs> those yeah. those cars yeah he, he had a lot of he had a lot of issues you, with it you, you know? gotta have another car to have one of those which yeah. is a shame because they're so cool and you can make them so very very fast but um uh they're they're real real maintenance hogs um but there was so much cool japanese stuff back then yeah, it's it's just a shame, you know, if you look at, you know, so that was a Mitsubishi product. And, and back then, Mitsubishi made neat the 3000 stuff. GT. They made I drove GT. one of those, too. Those uh, things turbo. were awesome. Yeah, yeah. I drove one of those. And that mm -hmm. thing was a beast. Yeah, those it things was were. It was like the one you see. Yeah. yeah. One 1990 my, when those came out. Those. Oh, man, that was that even by today's standards a VR4 is an extremely advanced car. You know, it was twin turbo and all-wheel drive and all-wheel steering and adaptive suspension active aero it had a freaking like active exhaust system you know it had yeah, it was uh, it was insane it had adjustable seat bolsters you could choose how much seat bolster <clears throat> you wanted you know it had it had all the tricks um they're yeah. also impossible to keep running but uh, you know you look at mitsubishi now and i i work for mitsubishi for eight months um, their stuff they make now is trash. It's all trash. None of it's any yeah. good at all. And uh, same with Nissan. You know, uh, sure what about the, the GTR though? I was about to say, except for the GTR and the Z, and the Z is pretty old now, but it's still a great car. But their yeah, Nissan's gotta, mainstream uh, stuff, I'd rather, I'd rather fucking walk than drive a mainstream Nissan now. Yeah. So the um, the like car, the Nissan ugh. that I had was the 280ZX, 1980. Uh huh. 280ZX. Yeah, um, that was that a, thing was a good car awesome i mean it, it was it seemed at the time it was very powerful and very quick um mm -hmm. but it drove so well i mean yeah. it handled so well and then i mean if you there were people that would put like big engines in them and stuff which yeah. i thought was you're defeating the purpose it's not a muscle car it's a sports car yeah it you just know, so happened that a small block chevy fit in them really well yeah the 350 but, people yeah. put in there yeah um, um so um so here's another car that's coming out that I'm actually fairly excited about. And let's, mm -hmm. let's see what you think about this. They're re-releasing it. There you go. This was on my list. Um, this was one of the questions you were asking was um, uh, worldwide cars I was most excited about. And this was number one on my list. Um, the new NSX has gotten a lot of hate from journalists and from uh you know air courts car people um why what what don't they like about because it because they're fucking nerds and it's like it's like okay if you have a favorite rock band that put out a really killer album in 1996 yeah metallica and, for instance okay there's there's pre-black album and there's yeah black album. and right. then they put right. out a new album this year you know, 22 years later, it doesn't sound like the album from 1996. Nothing sounds like the album from 1996 because it's 22 years later and things aren't the same. And people say, oh, the new NSX should have been a minimalist, naturally aspirated two wheel drive, hand built aluminum that they, you know, how many of the original NSXs were they selling towards the end? None. There were $100,000 cars 
that nobody mm-hmm. bought. Yeah. Um, now, but this is this <laughs> is on my list that, of one. This and the GTR would be ones mm, that are high on my list. This is so much more advanced and sophisticated and modern than a GTR that I don't know why they're still selling GTRs. Okay, I, uh, all right. Well, that's that's an opinion that has some weight. So I will look at um, these. Now, these are more expensive than GTRs, but the thing is, they're not selling. And so retail prices are similar. I mean, there's yeah. there's big money on the hood of these cars at Acura dealers. Um, but I mean, they have GTRs that are going up in like, I think a Nismo is like 160, 180,000. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It, it, that's the yeah. thing is I, I was looking at GTRs before I bought my STI and I'm like, dude, if mm-hmm. I'm going to spend a hundred grand, I'm getting a Porsche. Yeah. If you I know. or like an, an RS seven or a, yeah, yeah something, or a Porsche should some, be yeah, hard something to a, get a Porsche. Um, um, well, so, so I drove at, on the gumball, another car I drove, um, mm-hmm. the, the guy, for whatever reason, this guy uh, took a real liking to me. He had a 911 Turbo. Nice. And he's like, well, and we're sitting kind of at this restaurant, and, I'm, and he's like, well, you want to, you know, because you, you sit at the restaurant, and you can you could look around and see all the other gumballers. You know mm-hmm. you know who they are. There's a look. And it's, yeah. you know, and so he just walks up to the table, and he's like, hey, you're in the gumball, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, man. And so we, we got to talking, and a couple hours later, He's like, well, uh, he's telling me about his car. It's a 911 Turbo. I'm like, yeah, that's so awesome. You know, the last one, I, one of those I drove was like an 82. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, they're a lot different now. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> they're all wheel drive and all this stuff. He's like, yeah, have you ever driven like a modern one? And I'm like, no. And he's like, he puts the keys on the table. Mm-hmm. That's a car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is a car. That um, is a car. That, not that's not argue I, with you. Those are that's, those that's are what monstrous. I, yeah, that's what I want. Um, that's why I think America can make a car like that. Oh yeah, you know oh, we can sure. make we can do that. You know, um, it, it may take a few generations of we it to do get it, tuned, but it's not you know. that we don't make cars that sophisticated. It's that we make them differently. Um, yeah, we we make stuff differently. And we make it for what America wants. And what America wants is, you know, oh, going down I-95, you know, with the cruise control set at 80 for seven hours or like the highway on Texas. You know, we've yeah. got a lot of wide open spaces and, uh, you know, good roads. And um, we make a lot of our cars to accelerate real fast in a straight line and uh, to, to cruise down the highway. And so you wind up with things that like, and I wouldn't say that a CTSV is any less sophisticated than a 911 Turbo, right? Technologically speaking, I mean, it, it's a it's a 640 horsepower car that you can hold in a 45 degree slide in third gear with the tires on fire, with four people in the car and the air conditioning going, until the tires blow. Like that's <laughs> that's amazing. It's an amazing. It's a 200 mile an hour car that your grandma can drive to the grocery store. And get yeah. some eggs in and not ever know. And it's not, you know, it's yeah. not, it it's doesn't not have that cam No, and it's, yeah. it doesn't ride bad and it's not uncomfortable, but it's a, a total monster. Um, yeah. And we, and so, you know, the 911 Turbo is designed to have, you know, extreme precision at high speeds because that's what a car like that is doing in Germany is, is rocketing down the highway. Um, yeah, or, or track use, but I, I always thought of a 911 Turbo as an Autobahn kind of car. Yeah, and um, by the same token, you know, a lot of people tend to uh, poo-poo Japanese cars, but nobody does technology like the Japanese. Yeah, and, and that's that's my point. Is like, yeah, you, you the do, NSX is prime, prime. Also, an American-made vehicle, by the way. It's made in uh, uh, Marysville, Ohio. Oh, well, um, then I, I might look at that. But I wonder where they're getting their go. parts from, though. That's the thing. You know, uh, they'll show I you on the Monroney label. Yeah, I, I kind of want to have a, a car. Again, I, I want American. Why can't America make that? You know, why can't they make a, a V8, uh, you know, all-wheel drive, two-door car? There's no reason we can't make that. And, and you yeah. know, maybe maybe the first year it comes out, there's mm-hmm. some issues with it because you know they put a bunch of stuff together and they were basically trying it. That's that's kind of what I looked at the first year of the Focus RS as is like they put a you know it 
compared to a company that's been doing it forever, it feels like a slap together car. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry, it just does. You know, and it's like again the 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 best comparison I can make is like driving a 911 Turbo versus driving a Ford Mustang. You know, the Ford yeah. Mustang is clunkier. It it just there's sloppiness to it that you don't see in a in like a 911 Turbo or some of these other cars. You know, and the, and that that's kind of the feeling I got with the Focus RS. Um, so so I'm willing to I'm willing to give them. You know, maybe the first three or four model years, you guys are working out bugs. Mm -hmm. But eventually, I know that there's no reason that America can't produce that car. You know, there's absolutely no reason. Buy Japanese engineers. Mm -hmm. you, know, you got the money. So, yeah, no, it's not a lack of money. I think it's a lack of demand. Uh, in yeah. response to your earlier question, um, the NSX is built in Marysville, Ohio. Engine mm -hmm. and transmission built in Japan. Uh, U.S. and Canadian, which they count as domestic content, 46%, and um, Japanese content, 30%. So the yeah, NSX so actually, was a car that was designed and built in America and has some parts from Japan. But it is a, a fairly American car in terms of percentages. All right. So I, I mean, that's that's one that I would actually look at. It is a mm -hmm. little pricey, though. I mean, if you're talking about yeah. that car, I'm, I'm more looking into the Porsche market at that, yeah. at that price level. At that price level, uh, you, you'd have to you'd have to pull me out of an NSX with a winch to get me into a Porsche. Really? Personally. Oh yeah, uh, these things are so 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 next level. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with the 911 Turbo, especially a PDK 911 Turbo, but just technological advancement um, and 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 how how revolutionary the new nsx is i i'd be much more interested in it than i would be in a 911 turbo at that price all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna try to find one just to yeah. see I, I know s somebody out there sooner or later is going to put me behind one of those yeah you know, so you've I, got you've got for a gas motor you have a three and a half liter twin turbo v6 which is a great thing <laughs> you, yeah if you were just by itself but it's not it's uh, an electric motor in between that and the transmission that aids and sends additional power to the rear wheels and then you have individual electric motors in each of the front wheels that oh my god in addition to powering the front wheels also act as an active torque vectoring for active handling so it's you know Whoa. these cars are like damage your eyeballs fast uh you mm. know they, they do zero to 60 in the twos okay um, i i'm gonna definitely look into yeah, that yeah but then yeah. they also have, you know, active handling. So, you know, if you're scraping around a real hard off camber left hander and the front end starts to wash out, it picks that up from yaw sensors and like steering angle sensor versus yaw sensor. And it can overpower one of the motors to change the angle of the front to make the car dive in harder. Um, wow. So, I mean, it's it's like a Porsche 918, mm. except it's not a million and a half dollars. It's like one hundred and eighty. Yeah. And so people yeah, go, oh, so well, it's not a minimalist aluminum lightweight, like shut the fuck up. Like this car is so next level that, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's a couple decades ahead of yeah, everything else. It's, it's way crazy. ahead of everything. And um, it's for me, as far as foreign cars or foreign branded cars go, that's the most exciting thing that's in production now. Okay. Um, now let's talk about this. Okay. Okay. So th this year, because another again, uh, one of the reasons I went with the STI, I can I can have this car. Mm -hmm. You know, I can have this car. Um, but I went with the STI because they weren't making it an all-wheel drive car. Yeah. This is all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. And so is the new um, E63 AMG. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the um, the. Uh, so the Mercedes version of this, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the Mercedes competitor. So you're you're looking at a 3.2 zero to 60. It's got a V8. The only way this could get better is if it was two door, and they don't mm -hmm. make a two door model with a V8 in it, which I think is a shame. It it's sick that they, <laughs> you know that they don't. Well, they, don't they made the that. M6 with the same motor, but I don't believe those are all wheel drive. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to look, but I think the yeah. first, this, they're kind of easing into that a little bit. Yeah. Um, 
Um, let me see what else uh, in terms of cars. I was thinking of something else, but I can't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. um, so we would talk. We talked about the Acura, the Porsche. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you know what movie the um, Acura NSX made its big splash in? It was a few years ago. It was uh, one of the Iron Man movies, I think. Before that. Way before um, that. Before oh. anybody knew what the hell this car was. Um. Oh, like back in the original NSX? Yeah. Uh, um, um, the Tarantino movie. Um, yeah, Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, The Wolf I drives one. Yeah, The Wolf. Yeah. And I just, I just love that car. Now, here's another yeah. car that I see driving around up here. Um... I, this is actually, there's a guy up here that's got one of these, and I need to figure mm -hmm. out who he is so he'll let me drive it. Um, this thing is bad ass. We got to talk about this and see, see if I can get your thoughts on it. There's one of these driving around yep. up here, only black. Um, it's, a, it's a Lamborghini Huracan for people with good taste. Um, yeah. Yeah, they're cool. They're pricey. Um yeah, but the still other... not not quite to the level of the. It's a V10 number mm -hmm. one, and it's yep. still it's still less expensive than that uh, NSX. And you're looking at 540 horsepower. And let me tell you, this thing going down the road sounds bad to the bone. And they yeah, look that awesome. uh, that V10 uh, has got a has got a real good noise to it. Um, so the current NSX starts at 156, which was less than I thought. Okay. Um, so pricing is real similar. Now they also make the R8 V10 plus, which has, I think another 70 horsepower. I think it's 610. I don't know oh. what the price is on that one. Um, but it, it would be a toss up for between an R8 and an, and an NSX, um, as far as, you know, how nice they are to drive. Um, and you know, just personal preference. Well, and you, you're never going to be able to test drive either of those cars. You yeah. will never get behind the no. wheel of that car and test drive it. So it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's the same thing with the STI. You're never mm -hmm. going to test drive an STI. Yeah, no, <laughs> no. Uh, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. And I'm sorry, but you, yeah. you, you will never step behind the wheel of one of those. So you kind of have to know somebody that's got one and yeah. And they're pretty rare. I've only ever seen one of these on the road and it's up here. Yeah. The, um, they're, they're pretty pricey and they don't make a lot of them. Um, yeah. Another thing that I had on my list as far as current uh, foreign cars that I like uh, is mm -hmm. a different Audi. It's a little smaller. Have you seen the new TTRS? Yeah, let's uh, let's bring it up. So uh, yeah. the TT the TT is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I the TT is a, a pleasant car, but the RS is um, is pretty nuts. It's uh, okay, let me find it. Audi. It's it's not appreciably slower than a regular r8 is we'll put it that way as far as acceleration as far as around town driving i.e you're not you know tacking it out on the autobahn um the <laughs> the ttrs is is pretty absurd um i mean for one thing it's got a ton of power so it's it's a 400 horsepower yeah. two and a half liter oh turbo God. um it has all-wheel drive it's got crazy brakes um, but the thing I love about it is that I'm a sucker for a five cylinder. Um, I'm on my third five cylinder car at this point in my life. <laughs> um, and I love the noise that they make. They've got this sort of offbeat warble. And um, if you've ever watched footage from 80s uh, Audi rally cars, uh, the sound, the sound that a uncorked turbo five makes is like nothing else. It is just a totally nutty, crazy racket. Um, and mm -hmm. the TTRs, they sound like that. They sound, they sound amazing. That's um, cool. and you can also get that same powertrain in the RS three, which is like a small sedan, um, mm -hmm. which I'm a little less excited about, but I'm sure it's a wonderful, I'm sure it's a wonderful car to drive. I would just, I would rather have it in a TTRS. Um, mm -hmm. and then of course, being a modern Volkswagen product, there are companies that make upgrade setups for these to make them make considerably more power as though they needed it um yeah i think you, you can get like a big turbo setup from apr that makes like 600 horsepower oh this and, is only 64 grand yeah it's like half the price of an r8 and um if you lined up with oh, an r8 door. yeah 
if you lined up with an R8 at a stoplight, I mean, it it would be really similar outcome. They're they're really fast. They're like a low three seconds zero to sixty. Yeah. So, so like three point uh, one, three point four, something like that to sixty. I mean, it's maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll look at these too. Yeah. Um. It, and then if you just do a, a software update, even just a tune, you'd be getting a lot of extra power out of it. You know, yeah. 60, 70 extra horsepower. Uh, yeah, and there's stuff I could do to my STI, but I haven't touched it because it's still under warranty. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's something to think about too. Is that there's tons of shops that would love to get their hands on that. Um, you know, the and, thing is, is like my wife usually has to bring it in for an oil change because I'm mm -hmm. usually working. And when she yeah. shows up, all the Subaru guys are like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> you know, they they love. Are you that single? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can I buy your wheels? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm I'm running the uh, uh, Bridgestone Blizzax on it in the winter. Mm -hmm. It's 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 the best thing ever. So like yeah. we get a. Yeah. Uh, so the other day we got um like two feet of snow and and I don't know how long, like it was literally after about three days, it was waist high in my yard. Yeah. Like mid waist high, you know? And, uh, you know, so the, the snow plow, it gets down our road eventually, but it's going to be a couple days. Mm -hmm. and so this, m my car will, will go through that and never have an issue. And it's a, yeah. a low to the ground. And, uh, basically what happens is you eventually float on top of it. <laughs> and it feels like you're riding in a boat. Mm -hmm. You know, you eventually get up on top of it and then, and then, and then go like that. But with uh, Bridgestone Blizzax, um, I just have them on. I just bought some crappy wheels. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, it's fine. Like, literally, I would. You, there's no amount of snow that I wouldn't think that that would go through. Comfortably. Yeah, I have some significantly old Bridgestone Blizzax mounted on seal wheels for my car. Um, and even then, I mean, now they've been stored inside. They don't have any weather cracking or yeah, you know, any dry rot. They're, they're in perfect shape. Um, it, you know, we, we had six and a half inches of snow here, which again, you know, if you think about comparing North Carolina yeah. to, to Michigan, like you guys actually, are prepared for snow and have infrastructure that supports it and probably have more than one plow truck in your county. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah we, yes. do, we don't, it, it turns into a, it turns into a fucking disaster when it's, well, and, they, and the, the other thing is, is, you know, I used to live in Louisville mm -hmm. and uh, the thing is, is like, I would notice like, even if it rained, people would just get stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and it's because they have bald tires on their goddamn yeah. cars, like no tread, like literally you can see like metal. <laughs> mm -hmm. and so i think that's that's the other thing is is when you live up here your tread gets to a certain depth and you're just like mm, yeah and then the whole concept of snow tires yeah you know, like uh when i was in iowa you didn't swap out to snow tires because you just yes you got it got cold and yes you got some snow but you, you it's you don't get feet at a time yeah you know here mm -hmm. you get feet at a time and so anybody with any kind of a vehicle um, is probably going to have snow tires on their car or all weather tires at least. Yeah. Now, one, of, one of the other surgeons at the hospital saw my STI in the parking lot for a year and just bought one. Yeah. And so he also went with the uh, Bridgestone uh, Blizzax, which I think is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And then one of my buddies from Iowa uh, just bought a WRX. Right. Not, not the STI. So he bought the ladies' version of the car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't think that. I don't think it's really. Oh, a come on, version. just let me. Just let me. Just it's like me. diet STI. It's okay. not really. Female so you know, STI. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm just trolling, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So every once in a while, I'll say stupid stuff, and it's meant to get a rise. <laughs> I don't really think that. Okay. Yeah. No, I know. It's right. It's and right. so, but anyway, the um. So he he bought it, and he went. This was like I think it was like a month ago, and he lives in Iowa. Mm hmm. And he went looking for Bridgestone Blizzax and couldn't find them. Hmm. Like apparently they sell out. Yeah. You know, I would imagine then, in Iowa. Did he get some Nokian Hackapalettas? I don't know what he what he ended no. up putting on there. But like the thing is, is like apparently at certain times of the year they actually get kind of hard to find. I bet. So I, I got my car uh in September and as soon as like as soon as they delivered it to my office. 
Mm-hmm. Right? So we, we, and it's a, a Ford dealer that delivered it to me because the, the Ford dealer, they own a bunch of different dealerships and they also own a Subaru dealership. Mm-hmm. And they, um, I said, and I know the guys and I bought some stuff from him. So I'm like, well, can you get me an STI? And he's like, absolutely. And so they got it and it came from Grand Rapids and Grand Rapids shipped it up to our dealership. But the deal was, is I could not pick it up at the Ford dealership. They had to bring it to me. Some, yeah. Something. So anyway, he drove it up to my office. As soon as I drove it out of that parking lot, I went to Bell Tire in Traverse mm-hmm. City, which is a great company. And I'm like, dude, I need some Bridgestone Blizzaks. And yeah. I didn't have any trouble getting them, you know. But uh, apparently, if you wait until like you know December, you're probably not going to get them. Um, what anyway. I've heard is that the um, the Hankook iPike, which is Hankook Snow Tire, uh-huh. is a like licensed copy of a Bridgestone Blizzak, like an older design. Now okay. this might be total bullshit. I, you know, I don't know, but I've heard really good things about Hankook iPike. So if you can't get your hands on um, on Blizzax or on um, uh, Hackapalettas, which from what I've heard, Nokia and Hackapalettas are the best non-studded snow tires that money can buy, and um, people in real far northern places pay a lot of money to get them. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of those? I, yeah, I was looking at those and I was looking at a couple other brands, but I eventually, mm-hmm. uh, I, you know, I got on some STI forums and everybody there was saying, well, those are great tires. Um, but the Blizzax work really well on the, on this particular, yeah. car. you know, um, so I, I, it's probably, it's probably, there's probably a difference, but I, I probably wouldn't notice it. Yeah. And that's kind of one you of know? those, like, you know, get some snow tires. It's not as, it's not as picky of a thing to me. Yeah as you know picking out all season tires but i mean if you lived in maine i I would probably be really picky about my snow tires um i've also heard good things about the michelin x ice okay Uh, yeah that was another one that i looked at i yeah i just uh i just ended up you know ordering a set of blizzax yep yeah Um, they're 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 great tires and they just you know and we had hard pack snow it didn't have a lot of ice it just we got one day where it had been real cold for the few days before that we got one day with heavy snow falling um i've got real old ones they're like q speed rated so you know you're not supposed to go ripping down the highway on them they were they were awesome they were awesome in the snow they really just you know hardly any slip you know yeah and my car is two-wheel drive and i was you know <laughs> passing grand cherokees and stuff that were in ditches nice mm-hmm. yeah well it, it's all again it's all how you drive it so yep the other, uh, there were two Hellcats in the, in the uh, gumball. Mm-hmm. There was a, a thousand horsepower Cadillac like you had. And the guy had a, a window sticker mm-hmm. uh, of an old man. So you, a, a window sticker that, that you can like see through. But the window sticker was an old dude with a hat. <laughs> the idea was, uh, you know, if he got pulled over, it'd be like there was an old guy in there. <laughs> and then another guy had a one of the Vipers with the V10 mm-hmm. that was uh, painted to look like a police car, and it had lights and everything. And was it, his it, name uh, Alex Roy? I don't know, but anyway, I, I, that may be an inside joke. I but but the uh, the guy had uh, a V10 Viper with uh, it had police lights on it. It had uh, you know police decals. It had everything. And the cops were real interested in that car. I would imagine. Like as as long as when you're driving, you don't have the lights on. Apparently, it's it's okay. Yeah. But but I'm anyway, sending you a uh, an image link to uh, Alex Roy and his um okay his M5 that he ran in uh, coast to coast like Gumball Rally and all that. Oh yeah 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 I know this guy. Um, yeah yeah so uh, yeah he did a German police car apparently. Yeah, what he modeled it after. Um, yeah, I know. I know of this guy. Uh, yeah, let me let me put it up there. A delightful yeah. lunatic of a human being. <laughs> yeah, uh, car guy. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and that that's the thing is like, uh, um, yeah, I'd like to have that car. Yeah, E thirty nine M five. I think it's got to be one of the best sounding, um, just one of the best sounding motors ever. You know, especially straight piped. <laughs> Oh, so glorious. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, yeah, that's another car. Yeah, another car that costs an arm, an arm and a leg, and a firstborn to keep running these days. But you know, some things in life are worth it. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing. Okay, so I had a, a. Uh, I'll show you. I'll, I'll I'll put it up here in a second. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll show you what car I had. Uh, let's see. I had, uh, let me find my year, this, I'll put it up. Uh, so let's see, why is it not going to my wrong? Maybe you're on the wrong tab. Yeah. Let me just do it here. So I'm, now I'm getting all these pop-ups cause I had it. Uh, so I had one of these. Okay, Jetta GLX Mark IV. Uh, yep. VR6. Yep. Mm -hmm. And mine um, was yours I a 12 the... valve or a 24 valve VR6? I can't remember what year they changed over. Uh, mine was a 2001. Mm -hmm. um, but I bought it in Chicago and. What I wanted, uh, I had the grand designs on this car of using it as a rally car. Mm -hmm. uh, so all I wanted, I wanted cloth seats. I wanted no options. Yeah. And it was actually fairly hard to find because they were, most of the VR6s back then had all these fancy stuffs on them. Yeah, and, that was, the VR6 and, was pretty much the top of the line, like heated leather, monsoon stereo, sunroof. There, there were right. a lot of no options VR6s. Right. So, but at the time I was living in Chicago and I found mm -hmm. one at a dealer and I'm yeah. like, um, uh, and at, at the time there was this site called Edmunds.com mm -hmm. and back then they told you what the dealer invoice was. Now they don't. So you, yeah. So I knew what they, what their dealer invoice was, and I knew that there were all kinds of Jettas around and all this in Chicago. I mean, there were thirty dealerships within like twenty miles of my house in Chicago, and I knew. Uh, but this was the only this was the only one that I wanted because it had no options. It had cloth seats. It was like bare bones. The only option on it was a CD player. Yeah, that was it. Everything else was like bare bones, and I wanted it real bad. Um, so I walked into the dealership and I knew what his invoice was and I named a price and they had it marked way up. And I'm like, mm -hmm. well, and I named $500 over dealer invoice. I said, I'll give you this exactly. Uh, and, uh, if you don't want to do it, that's fine. I'll, I'll go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, we can't do that. I have to, you know, ask my manager and stuff. I'm like, tell you what, um, I'm just going to walk out. I'm going to give you a phone number. If you decide you want to sell this for this price, give me a call. Yeah. And I was almost at the door and he's like, okay, uh, we'll do it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I got it for $500 over dealer invoice, which was basically what it cost them to get it shipped to them. You know, but apparently everybody that was wanting a VR six wanted the one with options and stuff. And I yeah. wanted the one that didn't have it. So I actually worked out pretty well. Now that was a pretty good car. It was quick. It was zippy. Um, great but noise. It, made, a, yeah. made, made a great sound. Yeah, it, it was it was pretty nice. Um, mm -hmm. I that was the that was my favorite car I drove up until I got my STI. Yeah. Now that car had uh, two hundred and fifty three thousand miles on it when I finally got rid of it. I remember you talking about it on the Knife Journal podcast about getting rid of it, um, and it it just having more and more problems as time yeah. went on. Yeah, well, so they're, they're a big fucking headache to keep running. <laughs> well, it, it, for a long time, it was really, really, it, there was only one major thing that went wrong with it. And that's what mm -hmm. went wrong with it at the, at the end, something with the timing went wrong yeah. and it was going to be like three grand to fix it. And I'm like, no. Yeah. They had, um, they had plastic timing chain tensioners or plastic timing chain guides. And, um, if, um, they ran low on oil at all, which they all were cause they burned a lot of oil. Um, you I would, never did yeah. though. Really? Yeah. No. Mine, mine With was that many miles car. though. Even if it was ran perfectly, never was low enough, you know, quarter million miles, the, the, the timing 
yeah. components are worn out. Um, well, that's usually what the, the tensioners and the guides. And so the chain will slap on a cold start before it gets proper tension. And if it gets real bad, I knew somebody that went over some train tracks too hard um, and they had bad tensioners and um, the chain skipped and it been a bunch of valves. And it's like, well, it's junk now, you know? Yeah. But uh, it, it, it was still running. It just wasn't running very well. Mm -hmm. So I, I got rid of it. Um, uh, the only things that, so there was an MSR sensor on there that went mm -hmm. bad a whole bunch of times, but that was no matter when it went wrong, it was always under warranty because it was a defective part and they knew it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, oh, that's I had to, yeah, I had to replace that like four or five times. Uh, the other thing that went wrong is that uh, the, the windows, uh, every once in a while you would roll a window down and it wouldn't come back up. Yeah. And it happened like three times and every single time it happened, it was 700 bucks. Oh, like those the regulator were, would break something like that. But every, yeah. th but the thing is, is like, those were my only repairs and I got 250,000 miles out of the car, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I'm, I like the idea of like the German cars, you know, I yeah. had such a good one. You know that ran like 250. Can you imagine an American car that would do that? Uh yeah, <laughs> yeah, plenty of Ford trucks. <laughs> yeah, well, they will, but that's different. Yeah, that's yeah different. a lot of um, there's a lot of domestic stuff that's got a ton of miles on it. Um, Crown Victorias and town cars. <laughs> yeah, those are the, yeah, but they don't. Again, town cars with ridiculous mileage. Yeah, but the uh, they don't make the Crown Vic anymore, and probably mm -hmm. the reason they don't make it is because they were such good cars. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, they, they were a little they outdated, but they were reliable and comfy. Yeah, and town cars are like that too. But uh, yeah, the town cars. Um, I drove a, a town car for you know a few times. I'd rent them. They pushed through corners. I don't. I don't like that. Yeah, you know, they're, they they weren't real yeah. good handling cars. It wasn't a. It was a big, flo floaty plush box. You know. Yeah, and then you know the 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 feeling that I really don't like when I'm driving a car, and the Pontiacs always did this. No matter what kind of Pontiac, if you were going through a corner, it pushed. Mm -hmm. Always, you know. And I I don't like that feeling in a car, and that's that's what the Lincoln Town Car did. Yeah. Like in speeds. Now a Crown Vic, you can't beat it, but you you know you can't get yeah. it anymore. That's so, true. Anyway. Um. All right, I got another one for you. Have you, and I'm going to send you a link here. Have you seen these yet? Uh, let's look. Oh, the Kia. What is this? I'm going to, this I'm going to share like, this Kia, Kia Stinger, Stinger GT. GT. All right. I'll, I'll put it in our, uh, I don't know if they can see it the way it is, but I know how to make them see it. Yeah. Google.com. Kia, Kia Stinger GT. All right. Uh, um, so you were talking about um, all-wheel drive cars and um, you know wanting an all-wheel drive car for your climate. These are interesting because they come with two engines and two drivetrains. So you can either get it with a two-liter turbo that's 255 horsepower, or you can get the GT, which is a 3.3 twin-turbo V6 with nice. a 365 horsepower. Um, I'm all about can, that. Yeah, and you can either get it rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive with either motor. Um, nice. and I think a loaded V6 all wheel drive one is like 44, 46. That's um, not bad. so it, it's definitely worth taking a look at. And, um, some, some automotive journalists whose opinions I respect say that the Harman Kardon stereo in these is the best sounding automotive stereo they've ever heard. Um, hmm. so I don't know if you're an audiophile or not, but, um, the, the I, interiors I more than I am now. Yeah. The interiors are real nice. Um, and it's a, so it's a rear wheel drive biased all wheel drive setup. So it's a it's a longitudinal motor native rear wheel drive and then they have an a uh they have an all wheel drive variant of it. Um which to me is better. Uh it's more similar to like what a Subaru is. Um and I think they're great looking and they're a good value and uh in V6 form <laughs> they're freaking fast. Um and this is this is kind of like what I wish that you know, Ford or someone was making was a good looking big rear wheel drive sedan with a bunch of power. But I mean, hell, if Kia wants to give it to us, that's fine. You know, um, I'm not a I'm not a brand loyalist. And um, Kia and Hyundai have been hiring talent from all over the 
automotive landscape in order to make their cars drive good, which is, I guess, what you got to do when you got to figure yeah. that out. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's the deal. This is, you know, this the Bronco, the thing I'm skeptical of is, is that um, it's it always seems like the first few years of a new model, and obviously this isn't a new model, yeah. but the first few years where they're making a new car that they haven't made before, it ends up being a lot of problems, you know, mm -hmm. um, but, but well, uh, I think the saving grace for the Bronco is that being based on the Ranger, the Ranger is based on the global Ranger that's been out for like four years now. So it's like a facelifted T6 Ranger that's existed since 2012 overseas. Um, yeah. So I would think that they have most of the bugs worked out and, you know, the Bronco is probably going to be a restyled, but mechanically it will probably be the same as the Ranger. So two, three eco boost, uh, live axle in the back, um, all wheel drive, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be a pretty cool truck, um, but we'll have to see what it looks like, you know, seeing the concept, concept renderings and all that, they look really cool, but yeah, I don't know I, what the production want to look like. So I, I, I drove a, um, mid 2000s, uh, six cylinder straight shift or, you know, stick shift, uh, Ranger with a six cylinder mm -hmm. engine in it. Yeah. I loved the thing. I, I yeah. freaking love that car. It had vinyl floors and crank windows. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Yeah. You know, it's never going to break and you're never going to get stinky carpet, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was rear wheel drive and I ended up, um, trading it off, uh, because we were having a bunch of kids at the time. And if you have kids, you know that those car seats are just huge. Mm -hmm. And so at the time my wife was driving the Jetta and I was driving that pickup the Jetta was no longer working for her. So I traded in my Ranger to get her a used, um, expedition. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then I went back to driving the Jetta after my kids had trashed it. <laughs> um, so I, but I loved that Ranger. That thing yeah. was great. I, and, and of course, you know, I have a, uh, 81 F one fifty Ranger package. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I don't know when they started making the Ranger like a small vehicle, but in 81, a Ranger was an F-150 with a trim package and dual gas tanks or whatever. Yeah. Were they still making the um, the Ford Courier back in 80, 81? I have no idea. Um, because I know there was some trade-off. The, the Courier, I believe, was a Mazda. Um, and then there was like they made the Mazda B-2200, and then the Ranger and the Mazda truck became the same. And... Um, yeah, so. so and then they had like Dodge Dakota and a bunch of other stuff kind of that was real mm -hmm. similar. But the, yeah, the like little Japanese the mini day, trucks that were rebadged. Yeah, the, back in the day the uh the Ford Ranger and I I have it. I actually I've talked about this before. Actually on one of the podcasts Jim and I worked on it. Uh-huh. I think yeah, I, I remember think, that. Yeah, I think we I can't remember what we were doing, but I we had to do some work on it, but um Yeah. Uh it it runs great. It's got the but the only thing I haven't replaced on it is the engine block. Yeah. <laughs> Name a part on a car, including gas tanks. Yeah. Fuel lines, everything. I've replaced every part on that car yeah. except the engine block and it, it runs awesome. And so that's why, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep that because mm -hmm. it's, it's got nostalgic value and it runs great and there's no problem. And every, again, every time my wife takes it in for an oil change, the mechanics chimp out. They're all trying to buy it from her and all this. It's so clean, so perfect. You know, it was like kept really, really nice, you know? Yeah. So it's like a new truck, um, but it's rear wheel drive. So I'd have a little bit more trouble driving that in the winter up here. But um, yeah. yeah. And then the other thing is, is I don't really want to put a bunch of miles on it. I like to take it out and drive it, you know, a couple times a week in the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, so basically what I'm looking for is a, because of that, because I have that truck and I don't want to get rid of it. Um, I want an extremely, again, give me an American made two door car with a V eight, 500 horsepower and all wheel drive. And yeah. I'll buy it tomorrow. I will literally take my car and trade it in and never look back. Yeah. And I yeah. love that STI. I freaking love it. So yeah, they're fun um, cars.
Yeah. Um, so one thing I'm looking forward to is what it is that Subaru is going to do with future STIs, because as you know, the, the motor in your STI is a pretty old design. Very, um, very old. It's kind of basically unchanged since the 04 STI came out. Um, so it's still the same EJ25. Mm -hmm. But so Subaru has a new engine architecture, the I believe it's FA. So in the new WRX, they have this two liter that has uh, direct injection and um, is a lot more modern and efficient design. And in the upcoming, there's a new Subaru crossover coming out called the Ascent. Have you seen this? It's a seven passenger. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Um, so the engine in that is a 2.4 liter version of the FA that is turbocharged. Um, and it's kind of tuned for torque output at low RPMs, which is what crossover drivers want. But yeah. it is a bigger FA series turbo motor. And my guess would be that they're going to do STI things to that and put that into STIs moving forward now that they have these new Imprezas coming out. Um, and a more modern uh, a more modern motor, you know, with um, with direct injection and better turbocharging setup and better fueling and all that is, yeah. um, I think, could be really impressive because um, the the fuel mileage on STIs is not particularly great. I don't know what, I'm what kind at of about. I'm at about twenty eight most of the time, twenty seven, oh, twenty eight. Okay, that's that's not too bad. I think that's, that's above that's my... what they're rated for. Well, but... so so there's there's a there's a little dial. Um, mm -hmm. just to the back of, of the uh, stick shift yeah. and you can turn it, you can press it and it'll go to I mode and that's mm -hmm. to maximize performance and fuel economy. Mm -hmm. You can turn it left and it'll go to sport mode and nobody ever uses that. Or you can turn it right and it goes to sport sharp, which is balls out, no emissions, <laughs> nothing. Yeah. In, in sport sharp, that car is scary. Yeah. It is scary fast like unbelievably fast it, mm -hmm. it's, I, I mean it you know so i've driven I, dr I drove i've driven corvettes i've driven mustangs i've driven all these cars i've driven 911 turbos it's in that class in the in the sport sharp mode now th that's probably because i'm not as experienced or as good of a driver um but once you get up into a certain range i don't think that you're going to know the difference all that much between a bunch of different cars. I think you know? it's fair to say, yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody is going to say that an STI is a slow car. Um, I think it was a real revolutionary car in like 2004, yeah. 2005 when they were new. But even now, I mean, that's a car that does zero to 60 in the fours or like right around five flat um, and has tons of grip, tons of suspension capability and tons of brake um, I think it's a, I think it's a very sophisticated car mechanically. Um, yeah. but some of the it, stuff it needs to be modernized, with, some yeah, of the it, stuff it competes with just plain old has a lot more power. Uh, right. And, and that's, that's the thing is like, they, it needs to be a 500 horsepower car. Yeah. Well, before, even, before even 400, you know, so it had a leg up mm, on the phone. Let's, go, let's, let's, go let's just, let's just go five <laughs> more. It's not that you can't build a 500 horsepower STI, you know? There's well, that's nothing. exactly my point. If you can build it and you can make it mechanically reasonably reliable, do yeah, it. That's the issue is, you know, the guys that are reasonably reliable, 500 horsepower STI, I think is a bit of a pipe dream. Right. So what I think once you get past your basic to... upgrades, you know, breathing, yeah. Intake, intake, exhaust, tune. I think beyond that, you're you're getting into reliability issues with those motors. And people that know Subarus better than me can probably say more. But I, uh, I, I don't know anybody with a real powerful Subaru that the engine has stayed together for a long time. Yeah, they get the um. What's the name of that? Uh, there's a failure. Ring, uh, the, ring shock they, or ring they, failure? They, ring gauge failure? Yeah, or ring ring failure on the number four piston. Um. Yeah, on on those newer two and a half liters from uh, from running lean, which is usually from a bad tune, but it's just the way the motors are designed. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, Subaru that that's an old motor, and they're still running it. And if they went with a real modern setup of a you know a new performance motor like the two point four FA um, that was all STIified, that that. You know that'd be easily four hundred horsepower. Yeah, I bet. easily. Yeah, and that's that's what they're going to have to do yeah. is because they've they've kind of they've kind of lived on that 
on that package yeah. for quite a while now. It's time to it's time to bump it up. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's the that's the one criticism I have is that it is an older older motor, yeah. you know, and all that. But my God, does it perform? It's like seriously, yeah. if you if you if you if you actually drove this car, mm -hmm. like it's totally it's unbelievable yeah it's unbelievably fast it performs unbelievably well um it, the last know, sti that i drove was an 07 which would have been a late facelift first gen sti the hawkeye yeah and that's a violent car <laughs> it's they're they're, fucking fast they're yeah, it's unbelievable they, they like the shit out of them they don't they don't spin they don't smoke they don't slide they just they just go really fucking fast and yeah. um they're <laughs> they're a lot of fun um yeah. and i'm sure that the newer ones are more refined because that one was kind of plastic fantastic but um it was a it was an incredible incredible car to drive yeah. um you know they've they've just got they're so sorted and they have so much grip and control um so you know what else has about as much power as an sti now probably a lot of cars honestly that's that's a why i think camry right okay so here's my point okay. like okay so the whole reason the whole reason they I'm need more power me, the new the whole, camry v6 has 301 horsepower right okay so yeah and they've the, the camry and the and the you know all those cars have always had a lot of horsepower but just because you have the horsepower doesn't mean it's the same car that's true. I, you know, I agree mean, with you. I don't right. I don't think a camry could keep up with an STI on a curvy road. No way but, in hell. That, yeah. but, but 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 the but the point being um uh it's not just the horsepower it's the old, it's everything else that goes yeah. into it but i would like double the horsepower yeah i agree 600 would be a good number for an sti yes it's just like what's gonna break first like probably the rear differential you know you give it well, you that, give it one good hard launch you hit it, hit it kabang and like chunks of differential come flying through the trunk <laughs> like, well, right well so the, the the point is is like build it yeah build mm -hmm. with the parts you know so I, I i've talked about this for a long time but i just haven't done it um i need to build a morton building and then i'm mm -hmm. going to build a cobra Yep, I remember and, when you came on. Um, when you came on Top Dead Centered, you talked about building a Cobra. Right, and so so the point is, is like, I basically, if you're gonna put a huge engine in the car, put the rest of the parts to match it. Yeah. Yes, it's yes, it's more expensive, but you can't just take. You couldn't put a 600 horsepower engine into a a Toyota Camry and expect the thing to hold together. No, you, know, you gotta you gotta <laughs> do it to not plow into a tree. Right, you gotta you gotta you gotta upgrade all along the way. Mm -hmm. So Roush Racing um, makes a four twenty seven uh, fuel injected eight stack. Yeah, that that is freaking awesome. Uh, that, that you know they they say the low end that you're making on that is like six seven hundred horsepower. Low end. Yeah, you know no turbo, no nothing, uh, and they they will what they'll do and that it fits they made that engine specifically to fit into this kit cobra mm -hmm. and there's very few people that actually build that most of the guys are building like a coyote um engine in there and they're still crazy yeah um, the one that we coyote built coyote engines a, are crazy just in mustangs they're it, you know cars didn't used to normal cars that were 30 grand didn't used to be that fast yeah a, a, not even close five of mustang Help. I, 2011 was when they came out. If you drive a 2011 50 Mustang that has the 373 six speed Brembo, so like the summer tire performance pack car, that's a fucking fast car. They they are unbelievable. They are, yeah. they are unbelievable. And it was 30 grand new. It was the price of like an Accord EX. You could get a 420 horsepower. Freaking, they ran 12s on from the showroom floor. A Mustang GT in 2011 ran 12s. <laughs> you yeah. know. We we've never had it so good as as car nerds. Uh, yeah, you know, also, to get a car in the eighties that ran twelves, what well, you'd have to buy like a twin turbo Callaway Corvette or like a you yeah, know you, a Ferrari Testarossa. Yeah, forget uh, it. Like, and, and that's that that's my point is is like mm -hmm. I know the technology exists. I know we can do it. Yeah. Um. So the um. So I know it's possible, and and what I'm going to do is I'm going to build that thing, and it's going to be a 700 horsepower, 2300 pound car. 
<laughs> with the with the right again i'm going to go Listen, around then right. i'm coming up to michigan and i want to take it for a spin right uh, okay so <laughs> there, there you go now see and i know it's possible because i've mm -hmm. talked to the guys at roush yeah yeah and, and you're going to do different stuff on that like so i was a lot of the guys will put an independent rear suspension in and i was talking mm -hmm. to the guys at roush and they're like no don't do that yeah and i'm like why <laughs> yeah and they're like because what's going to happen is you're going to step on the gas and the wheels are going to bounce up and down yeah, not gonna and you're going to go fucking sheer mounting points off. Yeah, ask right. 0304 Cobra guys how they like IRS. They right. probably and, don't remember because like, they already swapped it out for a live axle. Right, and so th that's the deal is, is that they, they said put up a, a solid, you know, thing. And it, I mean, they, they've got it they got it figured out how to yeah. do it. You know, and so you're going to spend more, but and you're not going to have quite the same. I don't know. I know it's possible. I just. I just know that they're not doing it and it pisses yeah. me off, you know? Well, so here's the thing. If you're going to build a Cobra in your garage, you know, you're good to go for your V8 and you, you know, that's doable. You can get the parts, you can make it happen. But as far as hoping for an all wheel drive V8, 500 horsepower American car, I, I, you know, or really from anyone, I, I wouldn't be holding your breath because these, um, these, cafe standards um you know cor corporate average fuel economy standards dictate that everything is going to small displacement turbo motors and it's not necessarily because they actually get better gas mileage in the real world it's because they get better gas mileage in the epa test and yeah i get it the epa is the devil and that's why everything is going to they're dropping cylinders and adding hair dryers um and some of that stuff just sucks it just you know, it used to be exciting to drive a turbo car. Like I had a few cars ago, I had an old, I had an 88 Saab 900 SPG. It was a 16 valve turbo four and it, buddy, it was hot shit. <laughs> yeah. For 88, that car was freaking cool. And it had a bunch of turbo lag and then it would throw you in the seat and it was whistling, whooshing, popping. It was dramatic and exciting. Modern turbo cars are freaking boring. You know, a, a cruise eco, like, ugh, yeah. you know. It, yeah, it's because it, they're doing it to yeah, make up doing for, it for fuel economy. But yeah. some some of this stuff does not suck, I will say. Um, okay, so new... so so here you go. This mm -hmm. is, and, and we're probably running uh we're running on like uh, at least two and a at least two hours now, mm -hmm. almost close, and maybe an hour and a half. Okay, so here's here's what I would say, right? Today you might not be able to say that you can have a V8 uh, with 500 horsepower all wheel drive, right? Mm -hmm. In uh, 2001, uh, a 260 horsepower Mustang was like mind blowing. Yeah. Right. Do you remember the Smokey and the Bandit car? Oh yeah. That had that like 150. A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was hot as hell. Okay? Yeah. It'll happen. Maybe, yeah. maybe not, maybe not soon, but again, it, five years ago, if you'd said that there was going to be an 800 horsepower fucking American car that you can just <laughs> go and buy, <laughs> that you could just go buy from the factory. I would have called you a liar. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I think, I think that maybe it's going to happen. You know, if you had told me five years ago, there was going to be a twin turbo V6 rear wheel drive Kia that everybody wanted, I would have called you a liar too. I mean, there's no, there's no way that Kia is going to make a twin turbo v6 nurburgring chassis tuned hot rod cool ass sedan like no they, right so they make a sportage like to, to leave but, our <laughs> viewers to leave our viewers with some hope i do think that big big strides are being made mm -hmm. yeah big stuff is strides. getting better all the time and um it's well, getting it's more complicated better. but yeah like, like even your family car has got a couple at least a couple hundred horsepower Mm -hmm. you know, very minimum it's going to be a your family car today would blow the doors off of a a car from the 80s like yeah. a, even a sports car in the 80s like my wife's freaking subaru would blow the doors off of that smoky and the bandit car oh yeah yeah blow its doors off and it, you know so it's i think we'll a, get there. a four-cylinder cord now has as much power as a 300 zx turbo from the 80s did yeah exactly that's another car i drove Yep. Um, they were they weren't they were marginally faster than the 280 ZX, but they yeah. had the body shape, and I like the body shape of the 280 ZX better. Yeah, you and most other people. The uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were they were not everybody's favorite. 
All right. Any any parting words? Uh none in particular, no. Um I'm glad glad for everybody that came to listen to me ramble about cars and it was a uh, it was nice to have the opportunity to talk with you again, Kyle. Yeah, it was it's a lot of fun. You know, I I what I'm trying to do is uh for the channel for people that are watching and wondering why I'm doing all these live streams is uh I think that conversation is a very fun format. Like I watch tons of live streams now and maybe i'm mm -hmm. ahead of maybe i'm ahead of, of of where i should be but i think that that's the that's the next thing is uh you know live streams and if you can find interesting guests people with stuff to say especially for like cars or things that you know there there are a few subjects that people have like expert level knowledge in yeah and are extremely passionate about. And one of them is cars. Another is knives. Another is guns. We didn't even touch on knives. <laughs> I know. So we'll have to we'll have to do another one because I yeah. I haven't talked to you since you've been into knives. Um, but we'll we'll do another uh, another one of these sometime where we talk more about knives, and then hopefully there'll be some developments in the car world that we can touch on briefly. Yeah. But for the first one, I wanted to talk about cars because. Uh, <laughs> well, I can talk about cars for hours. So that's right. Hard. Well, and you have. Yeah. And and I know we haven't even scratched. What, yeah. What you haven't even scratched talk about. the surface. Um. So. Uh. You know, I I, I these these are these kind of niche topics. That's kind of what I'm really kind of focused on is getting people that I think are knowledgeable and can actually talk and have a mm -hmm. conversation about different subject subject matter and uh it's almost always that the person that's on knows way more than i do <laughs> you know so i i actually like that even on my knife podcast like mm -hmm. i don't have all that much knowledge about it i mean you, you make know? knives like i yeah but still it's <laughs> it, it's very different like there's a there's a there's a, a type of uh a type of knowledge about it it's like um people that can tell you every baseball stat from every team yeah every era that's the kind of knowledge about knives that jim has mm -hmm. like you can pull out something random that like was maybe maybe they made it like li literally i found this out i pulled out a knife on the last podcast this one mm -hmm. here this ek commando they made a hundred of them huh. and jim knew what it was nice jim knew everything there was to know about the knife some guy sent me that and it's like that if if you can find people that have that kind of knowledge about a subject it's like it's always fascinating to talk to them about it yeah you know? so hey, you want to see like, something i bet you've never seen cars. before okay let's see it yeah it's a titanium frame lock flipper from a new company hey who's who makes that that's <laughs> nice uh, this, that's a, it looks like uh, a sabenza inspired knife yeah kind of uh factor equipment okay yeah so nice. that's what i'm <laughs> what i'm working on a review of <laughs> yeah we'll have to we'll have to talk about knives sometime okay so uh i'm uh i got a couple chats here to answer mr wick says what knives are you carrying right now that answers that question he also says get ethan becker on so uh mr I, wick, I talked to ethan becker recently i talked to him at a show in salisbury north carolina he's he's a very charismatic person yeah he's fun um, and, and actually what i like to talk to him about is cooking mm-hmm you know, so I, I, if you look, Mr. Wick, you, you look around on the channel, he's, I, I've got lots of different videos with him in it. And then also, if you listen to the podcast, I've had him on the podcast a ton of times. Yeah. And eventually I'll, eventually I'll do a, a stream with him. But the, the, the deal is, is it's, it's, pr he's probably going to have to be in the same room with me. Yeah. In order to make it happen technology wise. So I'll do that uh, the next time I go down there. I'm hoping to go down there in the spring. Um, we'll and, see. Um, I, I was cheating. That knife was actually sitting on the table. The one I'm actually carrying is a uh, uh, SA Zancudo in D2, which um, is a fantastic knife for the. Who is this now? Who's, who makes this? Uh, it's it's an SA, um, but it's actually made by Blue Ridge Knives. So it's like uh, made by the same people that make the um, Ontario Rat. Um, yeah, that that's made in um, Taiwan. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that that's also made over there. Yep, yeah, it's made in the same plant that makes the Rat uh, Model One and Rat Model Two, but it's um, FRN and a full stainless liner on one side and a stainless frame lock and D two steel, which is fantastic. <laughs> so you you may not know it, um, 
because I don't talk about it, but I do have some history with the SE guys. Really? Okay. A lot of history. I um, would like I, like to hear about that sometime. I, I don't talk about them on air. Mm -hmm. but I have an enormous amount of history with them. Okay. Um, Positive anyway, history or negative history? I, I'm not, I'm not going to comment. I just have history. Okay. Gotcha. And I won't talk about them on air because like, I really don't want to advertise their shit. Okay. Um, uh, good guys, whatever. Um, but anyway. Yeah. Truth be told, I don't know much about them. Um, I just, it's a product I've wanted to try out for a long time. And um, yeah. it's a, it's a pretty good knife. So. Yeah, it's good. And they actually do um, put on a pretty good survival course. Mm -hmm. um, and their, uh, their fixed blades are made in America. So uh, yeah, who makes their fixed blades? Rowan. At least the, oh, last Rowan, time okay. I, the last time I knew of them, Rowan in, um, I think he's in Idaho, um, was making them. Uh, I had an SE3 that I took all over the world. Mm-hmm. That was made by Rowan, and, and Rowan's a good guy. I like that guy a lot. Yeah. And he's got his son, and it's like a dad and son knife shop that's making them. And yeah, th those are a good product. They could do a better job on the handles, is all I'll say. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's not like I'm saying that, and I haven't told them that personally to their face. Yeah. Yeah, no, nothing but dishonest that, about it. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could solve that problem, get an, uh, an Azula, and just make your own handles. Yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, I, I'm done talking about it. All right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so uh, thanks, thanks again for coming on. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll do it again. You're a good guest. So thanks. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.